Brother Barnes, something's wrong with you. Great man of God. He believes what we're starting to talk about when nobody else believed it. Miracles, signs, and wonders, and gifts of the Spirit operate in this man's life. And they tried to stone him and kill him, but he kept on living. Thank God for a man that believes it and lives it. Welcome, Brother Barnes. Did you do that? This is the greatest thing happening in Pentecost today because of the times. Never have I felt such a move of God as I have last night and here today. We're entering into something great here for this afternoon. Many of you ministers came here looking for something. And you're not going to be looking in vain. It's going to happen to you this afternoon. Brother Anthony is going to organize this after a while. And when you march through and the elders or whoever lays hands on you, I pray that you turn your faith loose when a hand touches you. And whatever your need is, you'll receive it. Because he's here right now. Praise the Lord. I came here last night. I was thinking, I said, oh God, why did they ask me to preach? I'm an old 75-year-old man. Don't you think it's about time for me to quit? And when Sister Mangan got through preaching, I was down there on my knees and praying and I heard somebody behind me prophesying with a hand on me said it's not over <laughs> that there's more yet for you thank you brother Clark for letting the Lord use you and just before I came up here Sister Mangan stopped me and said, It's not over. <laughs> said, Stay with it. And it's not over. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to read a scripture, then you can be seated. In Ephesians. The sixth chapter, you already know, don't you? Sixth chapter, Ephesians 10th verse. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Then in James 2.19, And this is where I get my text. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. My text this afternoon is how a Bible revelation of the one true God can start a revival of signs, wonders, and miracles. We've got to get it out of our head 
in our heart where we can release it with power and with authority. Shall we bow our heads? Father, if I ever needed you, I need you now. I thank you for ministers and I thank you for angels here. But since this is about you, I need you. I need your hand. I'm still just a babe. I'm still just in the primer. No one knows all about you. I thank you, Lord. And I have one request this afternoon. That every devil in hell and out of hell will see the one true God while I preach. Because I know what it makes them do, tremble and quake. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, Lucifer, all the fallen angels and demons, I command you to hear that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is God manifested in the flesh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And everybody said, the devil is trembling. Thank you. You can be seated. I will not endeavor to try to preach a, just the one God sermon today. I want to show you how to release the power of it. We've had great men in the past that God spoke to, Brother Andrew Urchin, might have used of God. I remember as a young man hearing about the miracles that happened in his ministry. The cripple walking. And it was because of his great revelation. Brother G.T. Haywood, another mighty man among us, days gone by, had this revelation. God mightily anointed him. Most every one of us has some of his books. Sitting somewhere in the crowd today is another man that has gone deeper into this subject than any man I know, Brother Kenneth Reeves. Somebody wonders why angels walk with him. Don't you know that God's angels love to walk with people that preach and teach the truth? There's two sets of angels, you know. There's God's, and then there's another set that follows the false church. And <clears throat> Brother Kenneth Reeves has many books written on this subject. And I have enjoyed them and talking to him over the years. But I read, I read the scripture to you. you went, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. But spiritual wickedness in high places. The call for 19 and 89 is this. The call to battle. The call to war. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting principalities. Spiritual wickedness in high places. It's great to cast out a devil in a human being, but... I come to you with a message today that we need men that can do more than just cast the devil out of a human being. We have principalities up there, powers that's destroying the United States of America and the whole world. Somebody has to rise up that can meet the devil. Now, I've been introduced a few times as a prophet. I don't know it if I am. But I got to thinking this past year, I want to be one. <laughs> Not to tell Brother Urshan and Brother Tenney what to do. 
Uh, not to tell that. No, I'm not interested in that. They know what to do. I'd like to be able to tell the devil what to do. I'd like to tell him when to get on and when to get off. We are up against some things. We need to raise our sights a little. Let us attack the big boys up there. And they'll get all confused and they can't operate down here like they'd like to. Now, I think if we're going to attack an enemy, we need to know all about him we can. His past his present and what his plans are for the future. All right, let's talk about his past a little. The first time I read about him, he's a fallen. Every place I read in the Bible where he fought God, he lost. He'd been losing for millions of years. What do you, why do you, would you think he'd win now? The first battle he had, he got kicked out. He thought, sure, he's going to win the battle with Job. But he lost it. He thought he was going to take Peter, but Jesus said, I prayed for you. I took care of it, boy. He prayed for us, too. It's took care of. He has already took care of it. Now, it looked like for a little while he lost. Somebody give me a little water here after a while. It looked like he, Jesus lost in Calvary's Hill. But that is the greatest victory God ever won against the devil. You talk about taking his pitchfork, pulling his teeth. Amen. And stomping his head. And I heard somebody said, when you stomp a snake's head, kill him, he'll still wiggle till dark anyway, <laughs> although he's dead. So I take the devil, he's just wiggling, he's dying. <laughs> and... The one thing that torments him day and night, that there's not but one God. And God said to him over there, said, you're not a God. He said, you're coming down, boy. Said, why well, are they going to walk by and look on you and say, is he the fellow that did all of this? You're coming down, boy. You're going to get dehorned. <laughs> and every time he thinks about it, he trembles. He quakes. He shakes. He almost has a nervous breakdown. There's one God. Now, my message goes back before there was ever sun, moon, or star. My message goes back before the first atom ever floated out in empty space. One God. That's all. There wasn't no angels. There wasn't no human beings. Amen. Just the eternal God.
that filled heaven and earth. And when he got ready to make this thing, he said, I did it all alone, by myself. Now, I want to show you the force of this message. What I want to get across to you, if Jesus is in you, you remember when he walked the earth, when he met devils, you know what they did? They cried out, screamed out, Thou Holy One, One, you know. That bothered him because he was the Holy One. What have we got to do with you? Have you come to torment us before time? He knows God could do it. Now he said, I'm going away, but I'm coming back. I'm going to live in you. Now, if Jesus Christ is in us, then the same devils seize him. But you see, we get so carnal and so doubtful, he can't break through. You know, if you want this to get into your system to where it'll work, you got to pray it in there, Sister Mangan. You got to pray this revelation into your faith. Into your spirit, into your soul, into your body, into your blood, into your bones, into the marrow. Get it inside. There's one God. So why not think about what bothers the devil? Can you say praise the Lord? Praise now, this new age, this new call for ministers is the call to battle not to a Sunday school picnic this is war this is war everybody say war. war but you see we got the difference we've got it but we've got it hanging on the wall we got the fivefold ministry and the nine spiritual gifts we got everything we need I watched a fellow, remember my church, he's got one of them great big old machines that just roll up to a big old tree and cut it down, just bite it in two and carry it standing up over here and pile it over. Well, I didn't have that kind of deal when I was sawing logs. It took me a long time, and the fella on the other end pulling it. And finally the thing would fall, not every time where we wanted it. But you see, why would that fella leave that great big old machine at home and get him a saw? That's what we're doing sometimes. We're still out there with a the hand saw. When God has the big quip equipment, the power equipment, the name equipment, he said, freely you receive, freely give. God gives you a gift today. Don't you be stingy with it. Praise God. Fellow got a devil, cast it out, and then lead him into the rest of it. Now, if you open the man's eyes that are blind and you don't lead him to the Lord, you still failed. Praise God. Now, the revelation releases a mighty force when you are God conscious. Inside of you, that's in your innermost being. There is one. And every devil fears it. And when a man is in this frame of mind and faith, when he walks in, and you know there's a lot of preachers that this has happened to, demons start screaming. They can't take it. They're ready to run. Somebody said to me, he said, do you pray the devil's out of a motel room? I said, uh-uh. I don't worry about it. I said, I'll let them worry. I'm a Jesus name, born again, son of God. 
And the devil knows that I believe in one God and that one God dwells inside of me. If he wants to hide on the bed and have a nervous breakdown, that's his trouble. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus went to his hometown and he could there do no mighty works. No mighty works. Only a few sick folks. Isn't that strange? He's the kind and good and loving with unbelief and everything else. He still healed a few sick folks. But he couldn't do mighty works. But the thing the Lord's wanting to do is mighty works through us. But now why couldn't he? They didn't know who he was. To them, he was a carpenter. They knew his brother. They had him in the wrong place. Amen. Just a carpenter. A lot of folks will never get the full force because they've got Jesus in second place. You're right. Why do people want to stick him in second place when he said over and over and over, I'm the first and I'm the last. I'm the beginning and I'm the end and I'm the alpha and the omega. Leave him where he said he was first. And then we're all set for the mighty works. Now, if they had to believe the angel's message about Jesus, said his name should be called Emmanuel, God with us. You see, if they'd have just believed that, they'd have had mighty works. They'd have had revival. The whole country would have been turned upside down. But they didn't believe the angel message. A lot of other people don't believe it, the angel message. Now, I want you to look with me in Acts 2.36. When Jesus, when Peter preached Jesus, both Lord and Christ both Lord and Christ that whole crowd began to cry out men and brethren what must we do when he said he is both Lord and Christ those Jews knew that he was saying he's Jehovah God Amen. And they said, what must we do? Now, notice that this one God sermon preceded that 3,000 soul revival. The force, the force of this name. All right, Revelation 4 and 3. And one sat on the throne. What I want to do today is to get you conscious of this. When you're walking in motels and healing lines and wherever you're at, you're conscious of this. You don't have to beat people over the head. I used to debate this subject, public debates. That's not the way. You can't beat it into them. It comes by revelation. Right. You come by revelation. Just pray for them. I had people just lately sitting in my office. Didn't come there for that. They just came for prayer. I talk, began to talk to them like I'm talking to you. And all of a sudden, before I got through, they said, I see it. Would you baptize me in Jesus' name? It come by revelation. When we become God conscious and release this by faith, the devils know it before the people do. Revelation 4 and 3. And one sat on the throne. One. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunder. I want you to notice the force of his presence here. You want to look in Revelation 20 and 11. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it. Whose face. The earth and the heavens fled away, 
and there was found no place for them. The force of his presence. When he released it, the galaxies disappeared. Everything fled. What do you think old Lucifer's going to be about that time? With a chain around his neck, wallowing in the pit. I served notice on him. Everything the Lord said about him up to the day has come to pass. He has no reason to doubt the rest of it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. The chain is coming, Lucifer. Now, this same Jesus said, if I be lifted up, lift him upright, not as a carpenter, not as a second person, lift him upright. He said, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. Now, God's blessed other people. Sure, he's a good God. But he told me, he said, if I'm bringing them in out of the wilderness, don't knock them in the head before I get them straightened out. Amen. The Lord's always going out there, you know, getting a hold of people. I told somebody, I said, Jesus couldn't hold a card with the UPC. But I, before you think about that too much, Peter, James, and John would have been one of us, I'm sure. But Jesus is out there shaking the brush. Talking to everybody and listening at him because he's trying to get them out. A lot of you was way out there when he started working on you. When did he start working on you? Aren't you glad they didn't knock you in the head whenever you got to the front door? Let you come on in. All right. I want to go back to where I was a while ago before anything. Then God created the heavens, the earth. Don't ever forget this as long as you live. This is, I never read this out of a book. It's in here, but it's not in the same words I'm saying it. The stories are there. When God created angels... They had one revelation. When they opened their eyes, there was one God standing there. They were created to worship one God only and to listen to his voice only. And when a second God appeared on the scene, a third of the angels fell and there was war in heaven. You can't get along with that two or three. You see, the devil knows this. If he can get you to have two, it's easier then to get three. And in your time and mine, they've got one big denomination has four. If you ever take on more than one, it's easier to take on some more. And the next one you're going to hear about will be the false prophet. He'll be the fifth one. And the next one will be the Antichrist. He had it planned all the time when he started this. He'll be the sixth one. Six, six, six. Got the world's mind conditioned to divide it. Because Satan fears it, he's camouflaged it and hid it. But I got news for you, the world's about to wake up the honest, sincere people in far more denominations than you could ever think. God's beginning to talk. He's beginning to speak. But if we just preach and don't demonstrate, you know, the one thing going to convince them is Churches running over, people jumping out of wheelchairs, 
The blind eyes open. Revival, 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 revival. You don't go to the fellow that was feed sacks on his fence to ask him how to raise corn. You go to the fellow that's got a barn full. He didn't have to buy any. It's time we have reached that point in this great and glorious church to rise up in Jesus' name and to go forth in his name. And we got a definite promise, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, when the second God appeared, it caused war in heavens. It always causes war. God, he said he, he claimed to be one, but God said you're not. And we know he's not. Nobody else. And then he created man. Put him in the Garden of Eden. He said, here it is. He opened his eyes. One God came down and talked with him every day. One, that's all. We read anything about well, one day, we should always, always argue with God about this. He put that tree of knowledge in the middle of the garden. And I said, God, why didn't you put it? Why did you put it in there for? That's dangerous. Somebody liable to get killed. He said, I made man a free moral agent. I want to test him. All right. I said, God, at least you could have put it up in the corner of the field, in the bar patch. <laughs> the Lord's watching you. He wants to see what you got. Have you got it? Yeah. Then you won't eat. But when that snake crawled in, I don't know why I let him in. Adam, yeah, that's right, Brother Tenney. Adam had authority and power over that snake. He had power over all the fowls there. Everything. Fish of the sea, snakes too. Amen. He had it, but he didn't use it. Amen. But I want you to notice what happened. When Adam and Eve listened to the second God, that's why we go to the funeral homes that's why we got graveyards that's why we got hospitals they listened to the second God God didn't like it he said get out he took him to the gate and said get out make you live in the best way you can for the sweat of your brow you had it made boy but you took on the second one and I don't like it And then the great, marvelous, wonderful, beautiful church. Oh, how it was rolling in Jesus' name, baptizing in Jesus' name, preaching in both Lord and Christ. What a marvelous thing they had. I don't have time to get on that, but one day, 325, they added a couple more. Results the dark ages, and you can't deny it. The dark ages, black as a thousand midnights. And the Lord has raised this crowd up to show the world the light. He'll walk with us. He'll talk with us. Because he loves people that believe in his name. Praise God. Praise God. Now the Bible said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. He said rivers. Everybody say rivers. That's more than one. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. 
He don't work outside of the Word. You got to believe as the Scripture has said. And then people who have the Holy Ghost out of their innermost being will flow rivers, rivers, a river of power, a river of healing, a river of miracles, a river of revival, rivers. Now, I want you to notice it said, out of his innermost being, up and out. Not up and stagnate. Up and out. Out. Get it out. That has to be done through faith in Jesus' name. Faith in Jesus' name. Turns it loose. And the river begins to gush. And we need some gushers. Some chalk movers. Some log movers. Just take everything with it. Wipe it out. Now up and out. That's the secret preachers. My phone rings. Day and night from young preachers. A lot of you out there. Asking me about this. A word from the Lord. How do you get into a miracle ministry? And all these things. And let me ask all the elders here. Let's bear with these young fellows that's trying to exercise the gift. Might make a mistake. Did you ever make any when you preached? When you started out, did you ever make a mistake? Lord, I'd hate to hear. I'm glad I didn't have tape recorders. I don't like them too much now for me. How in the world anybody ever got saved, I don't know. But they did. Praise the Lord. You can receive today. And I have just delivered what the Lord has been talking to me about for a year. When you become conscious of this truth, the Word, the name, you see, it's so easy, preachers. Say, well, I believe the message. But is the message alive? Doctrine's good. But if the Spirit's not in it, it's dead. The little we see in church was doctrinally right, but spiritually dead. They had it, brother. As far as money, big church, and doctrine. But they were dead. You know why I know? Jesus was on the outside trying to get in. Doctor's not worth a plug nickel if he's not in it. You can shine it up like Ezekiel's boneyard. The Lord didn't send him out there to shine bones. He sent him out there to get some meat on the bones and lie. <laughs> Praise God. I know some Pentecostals would have been shining skulls and <laughs> rubbing the cobwebs out of the, between the toes. The Lord said, prophesy. Come on, Ezekiel. Can they live? He said, you know. Come on, prophesy, he said. And when he listened to that one true God, that was the whole army standing on their feet. Ready to march. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now the silliest question you ever ask yourself is would God use me? Right. Would he use me? Would he use some in the, in the Bible that didn't have too good a past? I don't mean we shouldn't struggle for holiness every day. But I know there's good men that God wants to use. And you're sitting out here today. And when we line up here and you come through, receive it.
some of you been praying for something to God. You've just been asking God about something. Now the greatest revelation that ever came to men or angels in all eternity, one God. The next greatest revelation is the power of his love. He demonstrated on Golgotha's hill. And for you that are need a healing today, the next greatest revelation of love to you that he went to Pilate's hall for that body you are sitting in right now. He went to Pilate's hall and they almost beat him to death. For a short time, a vision of Jesus standing in three feet of him when he came out of Pilate's hall came before my eyes. I looked. His lips were swollen. His beard had been plucked. His eyes were black, swollen almost shut. A crown of thorns set on his head. And I could actually see the blood trickling down, falling on his face. And then it faded and I saw him with a cross on his shoulder, struggling up Golgotha's hill. And I think of that when I pray for the sick. The devil, I said, devil, all I'm praying for this and you go look at what you did in Pilate's Hall. That defeated you. You're whipped. Why do we let the devil roll us around and stomp us? Go back and read that again. Pilate's Hall. He loves these bodies. He's some, you know, we hear so often in the normal world, he don't care about your body. Just your soul. The old body can do anything it wants to. Don't matter. Just the soul. But he redeemed us, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Get mean with the devil. Amen. Amen. Get rough with him. Hallelujah. Tell him. Shout it. Devil. There is one God. And his name is Jesus. Stand up and say it, devil. There's one God, and his name is Jesus. He's my healer. Now, let it happen. Hallelujah. 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 It's happening now. Do you feel it? You feel it? Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. I receive what you did for me in Pilate's Hall. By your stripes, I'm healed. I receive, it. I receive it now. 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 Thank him for it. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Jesus, Jesus. Honor, your honor your word. We believe you're God. We receive the blessing and the anointing that go 
goes with it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you believe the Lord loves preachers? He loves preachers. Sometimes you don't believe it, do you? Sometimes you wonder because he don't answer your prayer. But did you pray the prayer of faith? Did you really get down to brass tacks? Amen. I found out that if it don't happen when you think it ought to, it'll happen when God thinks it ought to. After all, he's a healer. Now, because somebody prays for the sick and the cripples walk, they don't bring no glory to man. It's because Jesus is in him. And if that man walks in and devils begin to scream, we know who you are. Bill draws to Pentecost. That happened. The devils knew. Now, when the devil knew who he was, they knew he had power to work him over. You see, that's the thing. When God looks through your eyes and listens through your ears and flows through your hands, he did it, not you. Wasn't because you were smart are good I hate to see somebody that tries to make you think they got angel wigs growing on their shoulders because God used them a time or two I learned a lesson the first time I ever preached I really thought I did a good job I even bragged about it the next time I got up I couldn't even remember Genesis or Revelation Lord, how mercy, everything left. Just like blackbirds, the tree thoughts just disappeared. He said, all right, boy, if you can do it, go after it. Amen. Yeah, you remind me, Brother Tenney. A lot of fellas had them big signs up, you know, healing campaign, had the name on it. And I thought, that sounds good. I'm fixing to have one up in a certain church and place. And I paid $20 to have one painted. Barnes Heating Cafe. Man, that was pretty. My name, I never had seen it look so pretty. Boy, I was standing out of a tree looking at it. And the Lord said, Barnes, he didn't get me. He's talking to me. He said, I never heard of one. Then he said, I'll be seeing you. I said, now, wait a minute, Lord. Just a minute, Lord. Just give me time to tear it down. <laughs> Honey, I tore down. I rolled her up. That is the last time that ever went up. When you get too big for your britches, brother, he'll just leave you hanging there. He knows how. The worst thing I find about fellows that gets in the gift ministry, they, get the, they let the devil sell them on. Everybody's against you now. You've got a gift. So he goes ahead and creates him about 50, 100 that's already against him, he imagines. And then he can't outpray that. That keeps him loaded down. That's a devil's trick. Who's against you for doing the will of God, the work of God? If he is, don't look for him. Let him worry about it. Go ahead and say they're my friends out there. Bless God if he's not. When, if the Lord will work here, he'll believe, believe her before he leaves here. 
Praise God. All right, Brother Anthony. I don't know of a church in the world I'd rather preach this in than yours, Brother Manger and Brother Anthony right here. Praise God. Brother Urson said it well last night. You got to get down to earnest prayer. Get down. Did you ever read in the Bible where Jesus prayed more earnestly? More earnestly. Man, that hit me. He prayed earnestly, but then he prayed more earnestly. Maybe that's the secret to some of us. Pray more earnestly. Amen. All right, sing it, whatever you got, Brother Anthony. It's yours. Fold up these chairs and these aisles right here.